and welcome to the CMIP Debate Theatre here at NAB Show 2022. Next up, we have an exciting session on the complete station solution for ATSC 3.0 transmission. Let's welcome to the stage Scott La Presto. Scott, over to you. Hi everybody, uh, as, uh, as he introduced me, I'm Scott Lopresto with DTV Innovations. Um, I'll be presenting our complete station solution for ATSC 3.0 transmission. Uh, just a little bit of history of our company. Um, we've been in the broadcast industry since 2004, uh, been a smaller group. We're bought by a larger group and are now a smaller group now. Um, our initial products, here are some of our um, uh, customers. Um, and to get some idea of some of the products that we offer, our ATSC 1.0 and 3.0 services, uh, contribution and distribution encoders, um, transport stream conversion for ATSC 1.0 and also failover switches, um, increasing network availability, those are products that um, do reliable transport, such as uh, Zixie, one of our sponsors, SRT, uh, RIST. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about our, uh, our ATSC 3.0 products. Our first ATSC 3.0 product was Metarite. Um, that was started out as an evolution of our 1.0 piece of pro product for program guide. Um, so we started with the electronic service guide and service announcement for 3.0, but quickly realized that the other products on the market or that were coming to market and being tested uh, also included the signaling and synchronization, the root encapsulation, and uh, eventually the broadcast gateway. So to give you some idea, I'm going to show you a block diagram of our product, our, uh, the MetaWrite. Uh, signaling and service announcement has um, the, some of the blocks that I mentioned, including some of the components of uh, emergency alert and also non-real-time components, which is usually applications, broadcast applications, and also the dash component, which is taking as input from a encoder and dash packager uh, the audio and visual uh, components for the linear services. All of those components are encapsulated in root, which is a, um, it, the transport layer for broadcast applications or bro bro for broadcast services. The right side of the block diagram is our broad broadcast gateway component, and that is what um, takes the root and transforms it into something that a modulator uh, can use with all the physical layer um, parameters. And that has the components of the AOP processor, the PLP scheduler, the physical layer pipe where you're uh, taking multiple physical layer pipes and doing the uh, interleaving and muxing, um, which are then combined into a single studio transmitter link which goes to the exciter and then onto the transmitter. So for our MetaWrite product, we've, we've deployed it in a few platforms. We've deployed it on a, uh, on a one RU industrial server. Um, for Usually that's for a standalone service, but we also deploy it as a VM, which can be combined with um, other VMs, such as an encoder VM. Um, and in some cases, if someone else is providing the gateway, a gateway VM. Um, and the software itself is scalable, so it can support uh, multiple stations from the same piece of software, uh, especially if it's a VM. It's pretty easy, easy to scale just by adding more uh, virtual components. Uh, it's got a simple HTML Web 5, or HTML5 web GUI with uh, security uh, and multiple logins, multiple client support. And going through some of the input interfaces, as I mentioned, uh, for the linear audiovisual components, uh, we have dash ingest uh, for um, a program guide, electronic service guide. We have listing ingest for both broadcast or strictly for broadcast applications. We ingest 
uh, files, which are the uh, application package. Um, and then we also ingest advanced emergency alert tables. So for the linear AV uh, ingest, that's usually coming from a uh, commercial encoder so like Harmonic or, um, or a TEM. And the interface is usually a, a um, web dev, which is a publishing, web publishing uh, uh, interface, which has been around and used in a lot of different things. Um, those components that are coming from the Dash Packager are a manifest, which is the MPD. Um, and we do some post-processing of that to do any correction that needs to be done. That has the timing information of when the segments are to be displayed by the receiver. And so if there's any, um, any issue as far as what's coming in, we will we'll correct them so they're presented at the right time. And we can also insert additional elements that uh, the customer may need, uh, such as taking the genre from the listing and putting it into the dash component, which is supported, um, or using like a base URL if it's a hybrid service and there are uh, over-the-top components that, uh, um, that need to be signaled to the uh, receiver so that they can be retrieved. Um, but primarily, the segments that are coming are audio, video, and closed caption dash segments. And there again, th with the individual segments, they usually have a number uh, associated with them, which are a uh, offset from a start time that's in the manifest. And we can also do some correction of the package delivery uh, based, by, based on adjusting that number. For listing ingest, uh, since we have long history in doing uh, ATSC 1.0 PSIP, we support all the same interfaces, uh, Titan TV uh, Media Star Service, uh, Grace Note, uh, was now part of Nielsen, and PMCP, which is a standardized uh, format, which are used also by Media Star and Grace Note, as well as several other companies, such as ProTrack. We also have added support for Titan TV's ATSC 3.0 specific uh, guide data to service. Um, right now, we're only implementing the same as what you would see with the 1.0 service, such as times, uh, titles, and descriptions. But we're in the process of adding the more uh, uh, newer components, such as logos and title cards for the events which Titan TV is now providing in their uh, ATSC 3.0 specific listings. For application ingest, um, uh, usually as files are provided by the customer or prepackaged, there's a lot of uh, APIs that are being proposed by different companies. Um, and those we can retrieve either using WebDAV again or by using uh, FTP uh, retrieval. And our software has the ability to uh, do uh, uh, security signing uh, with using public key infrastructure for both author and distribution. And then we also have the scheduling component of when to send it, how often to send it, if it needs to be carouseled. For advanced emergency alert, um, DASDEC uh, equipment actually has an ATSC 3.0 specific uh, EEA module, and uh, we've tested with that where the DASDEC is FTPing to, uh, or we, we provide an FTP server that the DASDEC can drop the AEAT table into, and then we include that in all of our signaling. And we can also do to support uh, people who haven't, who don't have that advanced module. Uh, using uh, legacy EAS that's used in 1.0 and create simple AEAT tables ourselves and include those in the, uh, in the signaling. Uh, these are some of the signaling components. I won't go into too much detail, but uh, basically these are the ATSC 3.0 specific uh, tables that are in A331, A332. Uh, the low layer signaling, which gets the receiver started. The, um, the service layer signal signaling, which is on a um, service by service or channel by channel basis, um, as well as signing that needs to be done to uh, verify that the, the uh, signaling that's received are from where they're actually supposed to be coming from. And there again, we, um, we can also do include the uh, manifest that we've retrieved from the linear, from the encoders to the web dev and have modified. 
the root encapsulation block is just for broadcast transport. Uh, there's also broadband services or hybrid, which uh, uses HTTP, but root is specific to the broadcast part. It's used to carry the, the components of which I've already mentioned, the linear AV service, the service announcement, the uh, electronic service guy, the applications, and any other non-real-time that may be um, um, used in the future. B there are a lot of applications which people are proposing for being doing some sort of data casting using ATSC 3.0. Uh, the broadcast gateway component is the part that now takes all that street, all those streams, and places them into physical layer pipes, which then will get mapped to uh, modulated signals. Um, and so the scheduler does most of that synchronization and and um, deciding or assigning um, certain service elements that were set up uh, into individual. PLPs, and then we also have a way for the customer to set the parameters to balance modulation and coding to balance signal and noise ratio versus uh, uh, transfer rate. And there's also link mapping table generation, which uh, also carries low level service to PLP mapping information. And again, the output of that is called STLTP. It's the studio transmitter link covered by ATSC A324. And um, that, in turn, is going to go to a modulator. So that's our out output main output interface is the SDLTP. Um, alternatively, we can uh, also output some of the earlier points, the root, uh, or the ALP over UDP. And we can also export tables if there's any need for those for uh, inspection or if there's some other piece of equipment which is going to use them. Uh, and those are usually in XML format. And the other feature of MetaWrite is that it also supports 1.0 products as well. It, um, it, it, we can even support the encoding, uh, but I'll get that to that in the next part. But for now, it's mostly PSIP, which it can either be Carousel, supporting legacy products, such as the Harmonic and Atem, or it can be t uh, transfer stream over IP. So getting to the main topic um, of uh, this, the complete station solution, is our Medusa product where we've actually incorporated uh, audio video encoder into a single uh, server. And so all of the signaling service announcement and broadcast gateway that I've taken from the um, uh, MetaWrite is now being packaged with the encoding and packager. Um, this, the benefits of this are that we have a commercial off-the-shelf uh, server that we use, which has uh, four PCI slots, which can be used for um, a, a lot of I uh, interconnectivity, SDI, ASI, uh, RF. Um, it's a starter solution that a station's just needing to get on the air, can just use this and a modulator to go to their transmitter, and they'll have be on the air with an ATSC3 signal. Um, and it can be expanded in the future. It still has all the capabilities of the MetaWrite so that if people upgrade to a more state-of-the-art encoder in the future, they can uh, continue to use um, ours as a backup, but they will be using uh, the, the main encoder of, uh, um, of an external encoder. And it can also be used, as I said, for temporary failover. And it can also be used for lab development testing for people who are just um, doing some testing of receivers or something like that in their lab and need a uh, uh, cost-efficient platform that does everything for the 3.0, then they can use this. And the other places where we deploy these are for low-power channel uh, Franken-FMs, as they're called, channel 6s, where there's an FM at the 87.5, and then so they're just sending a single, uh, single uh, HEVC channel um, but they're also in the same 6 megahertz band, including uh, their FM service as well. This is the 1RU platform that I mentioned. It's got dual redundant power supply, um, similar HTML5 web GUI to the MetaWrite product, uh, front panel control to be able to set some settings like the Ethernet interfaces, as well as uh, OLED confidence, confidence monitor. As I mentioned, the PCI expansion slots for interconnectivity. The video encodings, HEVC, but we also support H.264 and MPEG-2. 
Uh, SD and HD up to 1080 uh, for now. In the future, we'll see if we can do 4K, but um, right now, most of our customers just have 1080i material. Um, it's SDI inputs uh, for baseband encoding and uh, ASI and TSOP for transcoding if people are doing like a 1.0 signal or, or something that they're getting off a satellite uh, IRD. We also support logo insertion and text crawl, some keen components like that. And uh, those can be linked to the EES uh, so that um, when there's an emergency service, the audio can be spliced in and the uh, alert message can, can be inserted as a text crawl. Audio encoding, AAC and MPEG for now. Um, again, that's carried on the SDI or transcoded through ASI or TSOP. Um, and then other normal features of, the, uh, of um, an audio encoding service. And then we have the Dash Packager, which um, can support the video and audio segmentation and um, creating the manifest, which indicates the service elements and includes the timing information. Um, and this is both ATSC 3.0 and Dash IF uh, compliant. So our roadmap is including Dolby AC4, first of all. So we're working with Dolby with their SDK and um, we'll get that uh, incorporated so that it's, uh, so even though AAC works from with all the TVs we, we've tested, um, when most people think of ATSC 3.0, they're thinking HEBC and AC4, so uh, we will be adding that. Uh, we also have products, uh, specifically our Ox1 product, which does reliable transport, SRT, RIST, and Zixi, as I mentioned. And so we'll be leveraging that IP since it's on also on a similar platform and incorporating that into uh, our Medusa and Metarite products. And also, even though we are, aren't claiming to be like the state of the art encoder and we don't have stat muxing, we would like to improve uh, the bitrate control so that um, there is some balancing or, or better usage of the bandwidth that's, that is there for the video encoding. Um, and uh, then we'll also be looking at more advanced HEVC that's supported in the ATSC 3.0, wide color gamut, uh, high dynamic um, resolution, and um, uh, 4K. And the other thing that, that's part of our uh, product line is transport uh, failover for ATSC 1.0, and so we're looking in at um, how that can be implemented for 3.0 at, at different um, critical points, such as the video ingest, or the, uh, at the gateway. So we're at uh, booth uh, W9211, somewhere over there. So if you guys want to come by and see a demonstration of the product, uh, please, please do. Um, and we're based out of Illinois, so if <laughs> you're headed out that way too, we can also do a demo there as well. Okay, well, thank you for your time.